Morning. Great to see you, beautiful being. Lovely to be out here. Let me show you the day. Why not waste it? Uh, or why waste it? Because I'm standing here and these are the flowers, right? And the smell is wafting from them to me. Obviously, there are a... And the so there they are, being fabulous. Let's get closer. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I can see somebody's with me. Don't know who you are, but it's lovely to see you. Andrea, oh, it's you, Faye. You've got the magic wand. At least it looks like a magic wand up there. Lovely to see you, beautiful beings. Look at my nerines, aren't they gorgeous? They're our nerines, really. They don't belong to me. They belong to the whole world. Um, there's just so many of them. And yeah, they get a bit chewed, but, you know, the insects need their meal. And we need the insects. They're a blessing. They're important. As much as we may find them a nuisance sometimes. Um, because, you know, they're part of the ecosystem and they're valuable. Wendy, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Let me show you the unseasonal magnolia flowers. Which are fabulous when they show up. Oops, I need away from the sky. There you are, now you can see them. This is early autumn, really. Um, and obviously we have lots and lots of Japanese anemones and some late roses and roses that need pruning and, you know, it just carries on. But this is the poster shot of the anemones. And there's so many of them and there should be. Oh, and look, we've got to go and see, see the Lucurlia flower. It is fabulous. Oh, and we have a bumblebee posing for us as well. So it's a beautiful thing to have a Lucurlia. This one also smells gorgeous. I like scented flowers. So, and scented flowers are often white because they use the scent to attract the insects rather than um, colour. So there we go. And oh, here's something else fabulous that's coming out now. The willow gentian, which is just fabulous. Every year, you know, you get this, let me stand back, you get this mound of foliage and then it just covers itself with these beautiful blue flowers. So, you know, nothing missing. Rhonda, good morning. Good morning, morning. And look, you know, I love the clover. What do you mean? It's only the lawn, Maddie. But it's, isn't it lovely? I mean, let's get a bit closer. You've got to appreciate the beauty of these patterns just love this so abundant so green so rich what else do we have here this is the orcuba that i pruned and look it's just back spirit guide it's great to see you we're just out here browsing around seeing what's in the garden and um some late dahlias i'm going to walk over the bed to get a bit closer they're a little bit dry. There hasn't been quite enough rain for them, but they're still bright and beautiful. These ones are a little bit fresher. Nibbled, see? But we've got to give food to the insects because we need those insects. They pollinate things. They are food for bigger things. They're very important creatures. So, now, ecology lesson over. Um, so today... Picking up exactly from where we left off yesterday, Tracy asked a really, really good question. Such a super question. I really had to think about how I was going to frame this and how I was going to answer it today. Because really the essence of the question was, if I'm doing my thing, if I'm doing my affirmations, if I'm doing my manifestation work, if I'm doing my meditation, if I'm doing my visualization, if I'm doing my vision boarding, if I'm taking all the actions I know how to do, if I'm being positive, you know, blah, 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 insert your protocol here. And nothing seems to be happening. What does that mean? Does it mean I'm doing something wrong? Does it mean God isn't listening? Does it mean the universe is holding out on me? Because those are all the questions that, you know, go through my mind. Well, used to go through my mind. Now I understand this process a lot better. So, um, I want to unpack that. And remember, you know, disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. This is my experience. This is what I know to be true for me. So, whatever I... I say that's useful to you, take it, run with it, use it, play with it, explore it, make it yours, personalise it. Doesn't make sense, let it go. You know, I'm not speaking the gospel, I'm just speaking my truth. Whether it's your truth is for you to decide. For some reason it feels important to say that. So, here's what I know, and it's in the words that I wrote about this post. So, read the words. 
later. <laughs> but read the words because, believe me, it took me a little while to really get those organised. Because in that process of crafting those words, that's when I really tune into what I'm going to talk about. So, you know, I'm doing my thing and nothing's happening. What I understand now about this, this process of creating things in quantum, right, is quantum creation. Three-dimensional creation means, and I'm using Joe Dispenza's example because it comes to mind because I've heard him tell the story so many times and it makes so much sense. You know, if you want to buy a house, you've got to go looking for listings, you've got to make a short list, you've got to figure out what you want and how much you're willing to pay and all of that's fine. And then you've got to go and see a number of houses. I remember before my first husband and I got this house, we looked at about 40 of them. I remember this process, right? And you've got to do the legwork and eventually you find one and then you do all the paperwork and it eventually happens and then you've got to spend 25 or 30 years paying it off. And that, you know, eventually you'll get what you want, but it's going to take a long time because that's how things work. You've got to drag your body through space from point A to point B to do whatever it is that needs to be done to achieve goal C, right? Now, that's three-dimensional Newtonian law, cause and effect, this, that, that, you know, A through C. Creating things in 5D, which is beyond space and time, quantum, that word gets bandied around a lot, but for me, that is the infinite field, which is comprised of information and frequency where all possibilities exist. When I'm talking 5D creation, I'm talking about doing it there. Just to be really clear. It's not some fancy spiritual ah, idea about what 5D is. That's what I mean when I say 5D creation. I mean going into the field and creating there. And there's a very specific process to do that, which I am doing. And I have to say it's amazing because it actually works. Which is great because all the other stuff that I did before, which I really put my heart and soul into and did my best in and believed in, did not work. Not the way this does. Okay, point made. So, if you're doing things in 5D, rather than having to go from point A to point B to point C to get to point D, having to go through A to B to C to D, there is a process. You go from linear time. You go through linear time, right? You buy the house, then you go to work and you pay it off. That takes time. It's a process. But in 5D, all of time is now. It's All of time is on the head of a pin. There is no separation between point A, B, C, D and E. The whole alphabet is right here, you know, which is a brain bender. It's really something that's easier to experience than to talk about. But if you really become present in the present moment where there's nothing else, no past, no present, no me, no you, no things, no anything, anywhere, just this infinite present moment with nothing and everything in it, then you're not separated from anything that you desire. It is right there. Which totally did my head in the first few times, many times I heard it. Now I understand it because I've experienced it going to talk about that in a minute because of course I had a perfect illustration in my meditation this morning I had exactly the thing I need to be able to say I just had this experience with you right but I'll get to that in a minute so if you're sourcing things if you're creating things if you're manifesting stuff 5d and everything is now in 5d then there is no going from a to b to c to d to e to f through time to get it it's now, it's here. And the way to have things happen, to be created, because everything's frequency, right? There are infinite possibilities, information, energy, frequency. Those words are interchangeable because you can't have frequency without information. Just think about it. A radio wave is a certain frequency. It carries information. A television wave is a, certain, a different frequency. It carries different information. A mobile phone frequency also carries information and you get three, 2G, 3G, 4G and the other one um, and they all carry different kinds of information so frequency equals information and frequency also means energy same thing Janine lovely to see you so in the unified field there are infinite possibilities because all frequencies and all information exists there nothing is collapsed into matter it's all there as potential and so because you're talking about, 
a universe of frequency. No matter. No stars, no earth, no people, no aliens, no anything. Infinite black. And not even black. Just an absence of everything. Pure frequency, pure information, pure love, pure creation, pure awareness, pure consciousness. Everything's there. So in that kind of place, what you got to do is make yourself a match to the thing that you desire. And that's a process too. I'm not going to talk about it. Joe Dispenza has worked it out. I'm practicing it. It works for me. I love it. It's the best part of my day. It creates the rest of my day beautiful. Tish, it's great to see you, honey. Yay! Um, so, in the unified field, I get to make myself a resonant match with the things that I desire. And here's the example from this morning. As a lot of you will know, because I've been dancing in this place for a while now, since April last year, it'll nearly be a year soon, um, and for a lot longer before that, you know, I had so much poverty mentality, and money's been a frustration, and tra-la-la-la-la, and so I have been working and creating around this whole thing of abundance, and it is shifting, it's shifted most of all in me, because I feel more abundant, I do, I just, I feel so different. And once upon a time, I never used to be able to think, oh, I'm just going to create some money out of thin air. That whole idea was just like, oh, get real, forget it. But recently, I've started to be able to do that because I feel so abundant in myself that I don't need it. I don't need it. It'll be fun, be nice, be useful, be empowering. I can do stuff with it, but I don't need it. I'm not feeling fear. I'm not feeling desperate anymore. Awesome. Great achievement for me. I'm so proud of me for that. And so I've started playing with a particular sum, and I've just said, particular sum by this time. And I was in the field this morning, tuning into being abundance itself, which I've been doing for a while now. It's a very interesting thing when you decide that you're going to become, embody, vibrate at, feel like, live like, imagine yourself talking and walking and whatever it is you are, abundance itself. Not abundance, not being abundant, abundance itself. I am abundance itself. Hmm. Interesting thing to tune into, to practice, to play, with, explore. And right at the very end, it suddenly came to me, now it's time to command matter, Maddie. And so this thing that I've been, that I've been imagining, there's, there's two things that, that have sort of been given to me or that I've created, whatever, it's all me anyway. One of them is seeing this pile of coins just fall into my open hand and then it becomes a landslide and then it's like, you know, there's just money. And it's, um, but it's beautiful and there's a sound and the tinkle and it's, it's gold and it's silver and it's, and it's beautiful and it's just a representation of the energy and the feeling about it. It's light, it's gorgeous. And the other one is seeing this particular sum in my hand, just a number. And right at the end, as I was, of this particular process, I, was, I just got the information, command matter. And I saw this number, you know, and I, mean, I don't even know if I saw the number, but I saw the dollars and I saw this very crystalline, clear, golden, whatever it was. I barely know what it was that I saw, but I felt it. And in my whole body, I felt the beingness of it. And I was just thinking about this walking back up here because I realized that I didn't even feel like I have it. I was it. I was that abundance, that money, that whatever manifestation of abundance that is coming to me. Now let me be perfectly clear, there is no way looking at my life that that amount of money can come to me. It's impossible. Hi Elaine! Lovely to see you honey. Totally impossible. So if it's going to come to me, it has to come from somewhere completely unknown. And here's the beauty of this. I really understand now. This is an ex that I am doing an experiment with destiny. I can create this thing and feel it. I feel it in my bones, in my heart, in my soul, in my entire universe. That I am this. It's not that I have it. I am this. I am this. And then as soon as it came, and it was this gorgeous feeling, it's like, now you've got to give it up to a greater mind. Give it up to a greater mind. Not a higher power, by the way. I don't actually like those words. It's okay if you do. For me, 
is not a higher power because I'm one with it. I'm the same as it. My mind becomes the divine observer's mind. The divine observer becomes me. It's a greater mind than me, though, because as soon as I come back to here, you know, I've got to come back to three-dimensional reality and live my life here and practice being enormous while in this five-foot-two body, which is hilarious because I'm so much bigger. So all of this to come back to the question that I need to make sure I answer before I run out of time. You see, this, this is the state of beingness. So if you want to heal your body, you actually got to come to the place where you feel it that powerfully. Your internal reality has to become so real that it's more real to you than whatever you see when you open your eyes. It's just you. You no longer identify with the person that struggled with their health or their money or relationships or whatever. You open your eyes and you are in love with yourself and with life. And in that state, your beloved can find you. But while you are still saying, well, where are they? Where, they come? when are they come? where are they coming from? How's it going to happen? You're not in the state of having it. You're not in the state of being it. And it is a wonderful surprise when it comes to the unknown, Elaine. Clearly, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, it's a lovely place, Andrea. I don't get to stay there. <laughs> but it's lovely to feel it and remember it. It reminds me who I am. And we all are this. This is the truth of us. You just got to... It's a certain state of wholeness in the brain. And we practice it. We, we practice it. It took me a long time. So... If you then open your eyes, you know, you come back from this place of, oh, this is great and I feel it and it's true and it's real. Then, you know, my job now is to walk through my day dealing with my life, dealing with bills to pay, dealing with physical challenges, dealing with lots of things to do, dealing with demands, and you all know what yours are. And at the very least, do my best to remember what that feels like. I'm not going to be able to embody that all day long. Are you kidding me? But I'm certainly going to play with it. I'm not going to beat myself up if I lose the plot, if I get scared, if I get angry, if I get whatever. But I am going to keep remembering it. And I'm going to keep practicing it. And tomorrow I'm going to go back and do it again. Because it was so much fun today. Bernard! Hey, honey! So we can't be looking for it. And thinking, oh, what did I do wrong? Am I not getting the answers? Is the divine source not listening to me or not answering? It's about living it and being it and knowing it. And that's, that's not easy, by the way. If this were easy, everybody would be doing it. This is a challenge. You've got to see through your three-dimensional reality and be something. You've got to be your future. You've got to create the memories of your future and live the memories of your future right in the middle of your three-dimensional present. But your three-dimensional present is your past present. It's all about the past. When you go into five dimensions and you create your future, then you get the opportunity to face this challenge every day to be your five-dimensional self in the middle of 3D. And that state of beingness which feels so good, by the way, when I manage to hold it and, you know, just connect with it for however long. By the way, it sends a very powerful, clear, coherent signal to the universe. And the fact that I can't stay like that for 24 hours is okay, right? It's all right. We don't have to be perfect. We won't get marked down or fail the exam. We don't do this all the time. It's not what it's about. We just have to keep overcoming ourselves. That state of beingness, when I am that thing in that field, that makes me a resonant match to that thing. And the more I can sustain that state of being, hi Emily, morning beautiful, the more I can sustain that state of being or refer back to it, remember it, think, oh, how would that, that me behave right now? How would that me respond to this? Where, you know, I've just had a fearful feeling come up and I'm thinking, hang on a minute, what am I scared of? But, quick example, yesterday the visa bill arrived. Only a small amount. And I said, oh, I love it when, when, I, when I have a small visa bill. And then I thought, hang on a minute. No, that's not abundant. What I love is feeling that it's really easy to pay this visa bill. So what if I have a $100,000 visa bill and I can pay it in a snap? Wouldn't that be fabulous? See, this is me discovering myself more abundant. So being in that state more 
moment to moment, remembering who I am like that. Hi, Kaya, morning, beautiful. Finding this practical way of embodying what I fire and wire and remember and create in the field, that draws my desires, my future, my dreams to me. Literally, quantumly, physically. This is a fact. It's a law. It works. So that's what I find to be true. That the more I embody my desires, and it means feeling it, it's got to be visceral. Heather, lovely to see you. It's got to be visceral. And the moment you catch yourself thinking about where's it coming from and why isn't it here, you're not feeling it anymore. And that is such a dance. Angie, it's lovely to see you, honey. Facebook didn't tell me you were here. It's lovely to see you. Um, that's, that is how it works, literally, in real life. Because me being it and seeing it and experiencing it, I'm making it real. In that place of infinite possibilities, pure frequency that I observe, when I observe frequency... There's a quantum event. A wave of possibility collapses into an electron or a photon. I keep doing that. I'm going to collapse more photons. I'm going to make it real and it's going to find me. And I do not have to schlep around all the sh house, you know, I don't have to go to all the real estate places and see 40 houses. That perfect house is going to find me. And there, I've, I've heard stories of people just doing that. They're on a drive one day. They see an arrow. It's their favorite color. They follow the arrow. They find this house. It's exactly what they asked for, what they created. They buy it for the same price that they wanted it to be. And it's everything they wanted. And it, it was just everything. Effortless. That's one of the stories in Joe Dispenza's testimonial reel. I kid you not, this exactly happened like that. So this is what we can do, and this is how it works. <laughs> Don't know what else to say. Big love. Thank you so much for asking fantastic questions. Jasmine, I've just got time to say hello, because i got to go now. Go and put my other hat on and continue to be the person that I have chosen and decided and remembered that I am moment to moment, just like you. Big love. See you tomorrow.